Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm announcing the Small Book Club Reads for 2023. The theme and the books for this year were Patreon driven. Voting patrons chose the genre for this year, which is horror. Voting patrons also had an opportunity to submit titles and authors that they were interested in. I went through did a little bit of research, took some inspiration from those titles, and that is how we got to today's reading list. What are we narrowing in on under horror? The Haunted House. The goal for this year is to explore the haunted house from various voices, various authors. I've read three out of six, so three of these will be revisits for me and I sort of know what I'm getting into and I have an idea of the themes and how some of these texts speak to each other. And then there are three sort of wild cards. The first book that we're going to explore together as a foundation for The Haunted House is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This novel was published in in 1959 by the American literary horror author Shirley Jackson, and it is considered one of the best literary ghost stories published in the 20th century. This I feel like is a very classic haunted house text, but then it also adds, in my opinion, it adds an element of domestic horror. So it is written by a woman, and so Shirley Jackson was very much butting up against gender roles for middle-class white women. We see an exploration of the home as horrific, I feel like, in a lot of her works, and I think this best exemplifies it. So we're not just starting with Ooh, a haunted house. We're starting with something with a little bit of meat on the bones. Four people have arrived at Hill House. Dr. Montague is this occult scholar who is seeking evidence of hauntings. He ends up inviting some people to assist him, Theodora, an assistant, Luke, who is the future inheritor of this estate, and Eleanor, a fragile young woman with a sort of dark past. And so the four of them are living in the house and researching haunted houses. So because this is our first read, I do know the date for this. We will be meeting on February 28th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Still plenty of time to acquire this title and to read it for the end of February. The second book that we will be reading is White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. This is another sort of haunted house, but with a slight twist on it. So this was published in 2009. This is, I think, very much speaking back to Hill House with the maze-like structure of this bed and breakfast. So this has been a home to generations of silver women and the essence of those women still exists within the house. Uh, somebody described it as generations of women inhabit the walls of this house. And I feel like that is going to be an interesting place to build off of Shirley Jackson's haunted house. Because Oyeyemi is a black British author, there is also a meditation on race, on nationality, and on family legacies in this text that I think will be an interesting addition to the haunted house narrative. This we will discuss at the end of April. I have the live stream booked in for April 25th, time is to be determined. Then we're going to be reading a new to me book called The Graveyard Apartment. This was published in 2016 by Mariko Koiki. She is one of the most popular writers working in Japan, according to the internet, and this story was translated by Deborah Bolivar Boehm. So this is the one stretch, but I felt like it was worth it because of the reviews and the premise that I was reading about on Goodreads online. So this goes over our 300 page cap by 25 pages, but I'm hoping that it will be worth it. This is considered Koike's masterpiece. So because I haven't read this one, I am going to read the plot summary from Goodreads here. Koike's novel is the suspenseful tale of a young family that believes it has found the perfect home to grow into, only to realize that the apartment's idyllic setting harbors the specter of evil, and that the longer they stay, the more trapped they become. This tale of a young married couple who are harboring a dark secret is packed with dread and terror as they and their daughter move into a brand new apartment building next to a graveyard. As strange and terrifying occurrences begin to pile up, people in the building begin to move out one by one until the young family is left alone with someone or something lurking in the basement. 
The psychological horror builds moment after moment, scene after scene, culminating with a conclusion that will make you think twice before ever going into a basement again. So the line that sort of got me and had me thinking this would be a good piece to mesh with the Hill House and White is for Witching is that uh, the family are becoming trapped in this home. So while I haven't read this, I'm hoping, based on the synopsis, that we're able to make this dialogue with the other text. The other interesting piece is that this is translated. We are looking at a non-Western perspective, which I think will be interesting. That live stream is scheduled for the end of June. We're looking at June 27th. The next book that we will be reading is another new-to-me book, and that is Mapping the Interior. This was published in 2017. Now, the author was suggested by a voting patron. Stephen Graham Jones is a Blackfoot Native American man, and I thought that might be an interesting perspective on the haunted house as well. Walking through his own house at night, a 15-year-old thinks he sees another person stepping through a doorway. Instead of the people who could be there, his mother or his brother, the figure reminds him of his long-gone father, who died mysteriously before the family left the reservation. When he follows it, he discovers his house is bigger and deeper than he knew. The house is the kind of wrong place where you can lose yourself and find things you'd rather not have. Over the course of a few nights, the boy tries to map out the house in an effort that puts his little brother in the worst danger and puts him in the position to save them at a terrible cost. We have a family, I assume is gonna be slightly isolated because they've moved from the reservation, so their community to a new house. We have a house that's bigger on the inside than the outside, like there's something wrong with the house itself. Again, going back to that maze-like house that you can get lost in. So I'm thinking that this will speak to like some of the other themes. And I like the idea of seeing an Indigenous perspective on the haunted house. The live stream for this is scheduled for August 29th. Then we have the last new to me text, which is The Hole. Published in 2017, the author Hai Young Pyun is considered a rising star in Korean literature, and this was translated by Sora Kim Russell. Now, the Korean cover of this book, which I will put on the screen now, has a house on the book. The English cover has a tree and roots and a hole, which I'm curious about that cover difference. This is not marketed as horror, but a lot of these texts aren't marketed as horror. Very few people are willing to put their name on genre fiction, which I think is unfortunate. Um, this is being marketed as a psychological thriller, but I think there are many similar elements in here to some of the things that we would consider like genre horror. So this is about a man named Augie who was woken from a coma after causing a devastating car accident that took his wife's life and left him paralyzed and badly disfigured. His caregiver is his mother-in-law, a widow grieving the loss of her only child. Ogie, Augie is neglected and left alone in his bed. His world shrinks to the room he lies in and his memories of his troubled relationship with his wife, a sensitive, intelligent woman who found all of her life's goals thwarted except for one cultivating the garden in front of their house. But soon, Augie notices his mother-in-law in the abandoned garden, uprooting what his wife had worked so hard to plant and obsessively digging larger and larger holes. When asked, she answers only that she's finishing what her daughter started. The publisher description goes on to say that it is a superbly crafted and deeply unnerving novel about the horrors of isolation and neglect in all of its banal and brutal forms. So again, I'm thinking about isolation, being trapped within the house. I am a little concerned about disability representation. I'm excited to check out a rising voice from Korean literature. That live stream is scheduled for October 24th, which is a little earlier than the other ones, but the, I think it's Tuesday nights that I've scheduled all of these for is Halloween, and I figured no one wants to compete with that. But fortunately, it's also one of the smaller ones coming in at 137 pages. So I just wanted to flag that. The final book that we will be reading together is one that I 
have read, and that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So this was published in 2020. It will be our most recent read as we explore this haunted house. The author was suggested by a voting patron. So Silvia Moreno Garcia is Mexican by birth and Canadian by inclination. Those are her words, which I like. This follows Nomi, who receives this frantic letter from her newly married cousin, asking her to visit High Place, this isolated house in the Mexican countryside. So while she's staying at this isolated house in the Mexican countryside, she starts to be haunted by the house itself. Like it starts to invade her dreams. And so she starts having these visions of blood and doom. I feel like the idea of like secrets within the walls of the house, like the woman sort of having the house reach out to her, sort of calling to her in the same way that Hill House sort of calls to Eleanor. I think this will be a nice bookend to this year. So the live stream for this book is scheduled for December 19th, which is a little bit earlier again than the end of the year, but I didn't want to run into all of the holidays that fall around the end of the year and compete with any of those. I know it's a busy time of year, so we're sitting more mid-December for this. This is one of the longer reads at 301 pages, which is one page above our cap that we agreed upon. Those are the six books that we will be reading for the Small Book Club across 2023. I have a PDF with all of these books and a few notes on each book that I will link in the description box down below. This book club is made possible by my patrons. It is free for everybody to enjoy, so thank you to my patrons for making this possible. If you are interested in supporting the channel and supporting this project, uh, you can support me on Patreon. Other ways to support this, like, comment, share with anybody that you think would be interested in this book club. Come participate, because uh, I love chatting about these books. The live streams are, I think, my favorite content that I've been producing in the past few years. I would love to just get more voices, more perspectives on these texts. Let me know if you're interested in joining in the comments down below. I hope that you are doing well, that you're staying safe, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!